This video is part of a series on the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. War is the art of bringing about resolution to conflicts by violent means. And a strategy is a plan of action or a policy that is designed to achieve a major or overall goal. This series is not intended to glorify violence. Rather, the strategies and examples given will encompass all manner of human conflicts. Although you may never find yourself in a war, you most certainly will face conflicts in your life. And you can use these strategies to confront the obstacles that stand in the way of your desired goals and achievements. Maintain your presence of mind. The counterbalance strategy. Amidst the turmoil of events, do not lose your presence of mind. Part 1. The Hyper-Aggressive Tactic In the heat of battle, the mind tends to lose its balance. Too many things confront you at the same time. Unexpected setbacks, doubts, and criticisms from your allies. There is a danger of responding emotionally with fear, depression, or frustration. It is vital to keep a presence of mind. Robert Greene The television series Band of Brothers, which is based on a book of the same name by Stephen Ambrose, follows the real battles of Easy Company of the 101st 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment from D-Day on through the end of the war. Throughout the D-Day campaign and most of the Belgian offensive, the company is led by Captain Winters, a well-respected and decisive leader. After he is promoted, the company goes through several captains of varying quality. Captain Winters was a CO we could all respect. Moose Heiliger probably would have done a good job, but before we got a chance to find out, he was accidentally shot by a sentry. Then came Norman Dyke. In one particular incident, a newly appointed captain, who is known for being absent, aloof, and indecisive, panics under fire in the middle of a tactical assault. <laughs> it is not that he is acting cowardly, he does not retreat in the face of danger. It is worse. Instead of making bad decisions, he makes no decision. Get me Foley on the radio. Get out of there! Move! So I think we should take cover. Leaving his company exposed in the battlefield in what is known as the kill zone, he has walked them right into the dangerous area where the enemy had planned for him to be and froze like a deer in the headlights. Lieutenant, what's the plan? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Seeing what is happening from the sidelines, Winters orders Lieutenant Spears to relieve the captain and take command of the company in the middle of the operation. Spears, get yourself over here! Get out there and relieve Dyke and take that attack on in! Spears is a leader known for taking bold action in the face of danger, even perhaps taking too bold of an action in some cases. After relieving the commander of his duties, he races from one side of the battlefield to the other, connecting different elements of the company and establishing communication so that they can move decisively to accomplish their objective. Spears did just what was needed in the situation without hesitation. The bold act of bravery was not lost on the company. He showed his soldiers that this was not a time for caution and doubt. This was the time for action. The only way out of danger was through the objective and any mistakes or casualties as a result of the action will be mitigated by the speed at which you overrun the objective and secure your boundaries. Part 2. The Detached Buddha Tactic Maintaining your mental powers whatever the circumstances, you must actively resist the emotional pull of the moment, staying decisive, confident and aggressive no matter what hits you. Robert Greene In the 2012 film Sully, based on the real-life events of the emergency water landing of U.S. Airways Flight 1549, the audience is witness to a nearly disastrous event that is avoided because of the precise and decisive actions of a cool-headed professional pilot, Chelsea Sullen Sullenberg. Loss of thrust on both engines. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Cactus 1549. We hit birds. We've lost thrust on both engines. We are turning back towards the Guardia. Okay, you need to return to the Guardia. Turn left heading 220. 220. Which engine did you lose? Both. Both engines. When confronted with complete engine failure and the limited ability to divert to an airfield, Sully does not hesitate. 
He makes his decision on a water landing and follows his decision through, without doubt or fear. Sir, you can land runway one, Teterboro. We can't make it. We're gonna end up in the Hudson. I'm sorry, say again, Cactus? We're unable, we may end up in the Hudson. I got an A320 diving for the river. I'll stack all the inbounds to LaGuardia. With a lifetime of preparation as a professional pilot, Sully was able to maintain his composure and make a split-second decision and execute those subsequent decisions to save the lives of the passengers and crew of his flight. The reason Sully was able to so precisely maneuver his plane into the water safely was not based solely on his attitude. Pilots train relentlessly for emergencies they may face one day, and government agencies plan this training to ensure that pilots have the knowledge and skills needed should an emergency arise while they are in the air. You'll make mistakes. Everyone does. Just learn from them. Yes, sir. And never forget, no matter what's happening, to fly the airplane. This meticulous planning offers a great advantage. Where the hyper-aggressive tactic told you not to be cautious or doubtful, here in the planning stages is where caution and doubt belong. Never take anything for granted in the planning stage. Always assume a system will fail or something will break. It will not happen the easy way in planning. Always plan for the worst possible scenario. And once you figure it out, never be satisfied with simply completing the task. You must do it over and over again. Foxton, brother. Yeah, but it wasn't perfect. Used up too much fuel. Ah, uh, you love the curve. Not by much. Listen, guys, I, I want to work it again. Well, let's get it right. Okay, set it up again. There is probably no bolder mission in the history of the United States, perhaps the world, than the moonshot, the daring expedition to land a human on the moon and return them safely to Earth. To accomplish this mission took all the innovation, daring, and planning that human society had mastered over the course of its thousands of years on this planet. Every detail of the mission was planned to a meticulous level, rehearsed, tested, and retested. At times, whole sections of this mission would need to be scrapped and started over. Everything needed to be planned to the most meticulous detail because there would be no rescue if the astronauts were stranded. There would be no way home if the ship fails, or if there was navigation errors. As Neil Armstrong himself put it, Follow. The damn thing could have killed you. Well, it did. A split second more, and well, you would we not need be... to fail. We need to fail down here, so we don't fail up there. This attention to detail in the planning stage pays off in dividends when it is time to execute. So as the battle plays out, or as your plans come to fruition, you can sit back like the detached Buddha, calm in the face of so much going on, because you have already planned for all the possible scenarios. And even when something does go wrong, which it inevitably will, you know the procedures that you must do to complete the mission, because you have already thought them through. You've told them to your team, you've practiced them, you've tested them, and you've retested them. Part 3. Expose yourself to conflict. Make your mind tougher by exposing it to adversity. Learn to detach yourself from the chaos of the battlefield. Let others lose their heads. Your presence of mind will steer you clear of their influence and keep you on course. Robert Green. General George S. Patton was a battlefield general, which was what his boss, the Supreme Commander in the European Theater, General Eisenhower, liked about him. He did not stay miles behind the front line. I'm going down there myself. He often exposed himself to the dangers that his soldiers were constantly facing. How the hell did he get over there? What the hell are you waiting for? Looking for a place to talk to Ford, General! I sent out a patrol to reconnoiter. I've already done that. Right down there, the sewers no more than three feet deep. If you get that outfit cranked up, you're going to be out of a job. This gave him clout amongst his men. But he understood the dangers and the hardships they face, and knew that he would never put them into danger unless it was necessary and a calculated risk. 
For Patton himself, this would instill a fear in him that came with engaging the enemy, that pushed him forward into the conflict. Well, we may have to pull up and wait for better weather. Brave men dying up there. I'm not going to wait, not an hour, not a minute. We're going to keep moving. Is that clear? We're going to attack all night. We're going to attack tomorrow morning. If we are not victorious, let no one come back alive. Another advantage that came with touring the front lines is developing a personal sense of the terrain and the circumstances on the ground. Too many top military commanders can become reliant on second or third hand observations to make decisions. Finished a couple hours ago. This morning the fighting was hand to hand. By placing himself closest to the action, Patton was able to develop a sense for the ground he was fighting on, the spirit of the enemy combatants, and the morale of his own forces. Information can become distorted when it passes through too many ears and mouths, particularly in a rigid command structure where subordinates are more likely to only pass along favorable news to their superiors. Leaders need to know the truth, and the best way to know what is really going on is to observe it for yourself. In the 1987 film, The Untouchables, set around real people and events of the Prohibition, Kevin Costner plays agitated Treasury agent Elliot Ness, who is frustrated by his department's inability to police the increasing criminal gang warfare that is being fueled by the black market for illegal alcohol. Question of whether or not it's a harmless drink, it may very well be, but it's against the law, gentlemen. And as we are going to enforce the law, we must do first by example. Elliot Ness is a bureaucrat by trade, not familiar with policing strategies and the tactics of enforcement. In the film, he partners with a beat cop named Jim Ballone. Mr. Ness, everybody knows where the booze is. The problem isn't finding it. The problem is who wants to cross the pump. This common police officer knows the streets and knows how the criminals operate. He also knows how crooked cops assist them. He is what Elliot needed, a cool-headed beat cop that knows how to operate from a lifetime in the business, without getting overly excited in anticipation or flustered in the heat of the moment. He is somebody who knows what is needed and acts decisively and with a level head. Malone is not intimidated by criminals or by his fellow police. Together, Malone and Ness build a team that can be trusted. And in a time when corruption in the force is rampant, having people you can rely on to do what is right and to keep your secrets is imperative to accomplishing a mission. Part 4. Keys to Warfare Expose yourself to conflict. Even Captain Spears as commander of Easy Company was always willing to put himself in danger and challenge himself to put his training and his medal to the test in actual combat. Mighty P Company takes a shot at the next gun! All yours! Let's go down Company! In particular, he demonstrated this when he volunteered to assault a gun position when Easy Company was tasked with destroying a German artillery battery on D-Day. Become self-reliant. need another man. You carry a badge? Yes. Carry a gun. Such as in The Untouchables, don't trust anybody outside of your group. The point of Elliot Ness's Untouchables was to create a group of like-minded professionals that could be trusted. These were police of principle that believed in the just cause of the mission. They could not be bought off with bribes, promotions, or threats. They were in the game for the end result, not to benefit themselves personally. You're making a mistake. Yeah, well I've made them before. I'm beginning to enjoy them. You fellows are untouchable. Is that the thing? No one can get to you? Yeah. You took a pawn. Hey, everyone can be gotten to. Then I'll see him in hell. Suffer fools greatly. Many people told General Eisenhower that Patton was a loose cannon. He was too aggressive at times. After an incident where Patton notoriously slapped a soldier, Eisenhower was forced to sideline his old friend. Shut up! Don't admit this yellow bastard. Nothing wrong with him. I won't have sons of bitches. You're afraid to fight stinging up this place of honor? 
However, when other generals proved too cautious, particularly in the Battle of Kazarine Pass in Northern Africa, I didn't think I Eisenhower was able to reinstate Patton in command. George, you have performed brilliantly. You are loyal, dedicated. You're one of the best field commanders I've got, but you don't know when to shut up. George, you're a pain in the neck where he excelled in pushing the objective, closing the distance to the enemy, and ultimately leading the Allies to victory in Europe. Crowd out feelings of panic and focus on simple tasks. 220. 220. Which engine did you lose? Both, both engines. When the double bird strike knocked out the engines of Sully's airplane, the crew went right into their pre-planned procedures. Ignition. Ignition. Thrust levers, confirm, idle. Idle. Airspeed, up in the relay 300 knots. We don't have that. No. That they had practiced and were familiar with. There was no time for emotional response, only to focus on the pre-planned actions that each person had to perform. Unintimidate yourself. When Elliot Ness first meets Jim Malone, the first thing he notices, even chastises him for, is his lack of respect for a fellow officer. You just turned your back on an armed man. You're a treasury officer. Yeah, how do you know that? I just told you I was. Who would claim to be that who was not? Hmm? Malone shows no intimidation when he is confronted by authority or peers. Develop your fingertip feel. Turn the manual. The NASA astronauts of the Apollo missions were trained to the point of near perfection because the potential for a mission failure was so great each astronaut had to know how to accomplish their task with the ease of a Grand Master. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. The reversal. You may at times panic. It's unfortunate, but it is natural. And when that happens, you must reflect on your actions. Play back the tape in your head and think about what you could have done differently as if you were a coach of a football team rewatching old game tape. It's not unimaginable to lose your composure once, but it is completely unforgivable to lose it twice. This has been a production of Minimum Effort Media. There are new video essays here on the first Friday of every month. If you would like to own a copy of the 33 Strategies of War, you can do so by using the Amazon link in the description below. I am also giving away a copy of the book with each video on the 33 strategies of war I release between now and December of 2022. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber with notifications turned on, like the video, and leave a comment below. I will pick the comments at random from each one of my videos, and I will post the winners on the first Friday of December. You can reach out to me at The Lazy Stoic across all social media. Thank you for watching.